from Kampala. This is Cinema Red Pill, a movie podcast, a podcast where we basically talk about movies, TV. Today we're going to do a documentary. I'm Sharon, the host. And I'm Timothy, regular contributor to the podcast. You're basically a co-host. <laughs> okay, co-host. Uh, I'll take yes. that. On today's episode, we're going to talk about a documentary that's titled God Loves Uganda. Uh, this is going to be new. <laughs> First of all, interesting and new for us. I think this is going to be. This is we're going to talk about a very sensitive topics. Yeah. Basically, very sensitive topics, yeah. because the the documentary addresses homosexuality, and it also addresses um, abstinence. It basically addresses sexuality, and there's few things more sensitive in life, yeah. more than sexuality and what someone thinks of your sexuality. Yeah in either how you should do if you should do it before marriage after marriage who you should have it with when you should have it it's just such an uptight topic that yeah. everyone has such hefty opinions yeah. on <laughs> yeah it's pretty one-sided <laughs> why do you in what Uganda. do you mean it oh here is very very yeah. one-sided yeah. Yeah. yeah but anyway so this documentary was uh done in 2013 Thank you, Timothy, for the suggestion, by the way, for us to do this. (laughs) And uh, it's all about the influence of evangelicals on public policy of Uganda, but in particular about the campaign for abstinence and homosexuality. How The anti-homosexuality bill. Yes, in particular the anti... So it's basically how they affect these policies because there's the anti-homosexuality bill. But there's also a segment where they talk about the campaign for abstinence and how they had an influence on that because of what the the implications towards doing such things. And this is a bit timely in very many aspects, actually, (laughs) because... There's more, more, there's more, it, it, it goes as a whole in morality and, and the policies they try to put in terms of morality. Like we've recently also had a miniskirt bill and now we have an anti-porn committee, which I would not be surprised if a law and act comes in motion due to the anti-porn committee. Um, the documentary has very notable names in it who you can see. There's Pastor Kayanja from, what's his church called? Rubaga Miracle Center. Rubaga Miracle Center. There's Martin Sempa. There's uh, Christopher, my favorite one, Christopher Senyonjo. Bishop Christopher, Bishop Christopher Senyonjo. Something frightening is happening in Uganda. I foresee a lot of death. The fire has already been set, and I think it is important to trace it back to where it is coming from. Well, the International House of Prayer began in 1999. We have about a thousand full-time staff. We are called to be a missionary people. I believe the Lord is calling me to, to pray for a great missionary force. America is not yet done sending her sons and daughters to bring the gospel to the nations. Most of these young people, it's a time to have an adventure. But the poor African listening to them think that's how things should be. The Bible say, okay, all sex outside of marriage is wrong. So adultery is wrong, fornication is wrong, acts of homosexuality are wrong. Homosexuality does not benefit the society. It's sin. Are you ready for Jesus? We do not fight some of them because of who they are, but what they do. So before we start talking about the film, I actually wanted to first talk about, to give a bit of basics about the filmmaker because I was really interested in who he is it would have been a lot more interesting if this was done by Ugandans I think they would have been banned out of the country but the people in the documentary were indeed banned from the country but this guy is a guy called Roger Ross Williams he's an African American guy who is also gay Yes. and he this was his first feature film he won an academy award for a film called um, what is it called Music by Prudence. Prudence. Yeah, yes. I, read, I read about that. He was actually the first African American to win, win. an Oscar. Yeah. Which was quite and, amazing. It blew my know, mind when I read that. I know. Like, <laughs> what? I was so fascinated reading yeah. about this guy. He was obsessed with the first African American actress. The first. Yes. It was actually the first 
for anything like producing directing anything of the sort we, i kept thinking with the person we always look at as first african-american although he didn't win any award is spike lee yeah he has but in the indie world yeah. because we talked yeah. about he's, his he's film. A notable filmmaker yes yeah. he's so notable and this guy like i've just got to know his name because of this documentary yeah. but he's so fascinating he did that film then he did god loves uganda and last year he had a film that i was hearing about called yeah. life animated you were hearing so about it's, so it right it still yes, up to now i, I was shocked yet, i'm like what <laughs> this guy yeah. it's called life animated and it's about a young autistic boy who learns how to communicate through animated movies because autistic children have issues like that yeah. But he was very interesting. It was so fascinating to read about him and his background, and you could clearly see how he was inspired to do something like this. But yeah. I think uh, let's begin talking about the movie and what's in the movie. Mm-hmm. I think it would be nice if we went according to the pace that the movie went in, yeah. a bit with where it begins, yeah. the middle, and okay. kind of where it ends. Yeah. I'm a bit vague on the whole structure, but... Uh, I'm sure you point out the parts and I'll just be Yeah, I don't have them down but okay. I just think Okay, we we know where to start from. Where yeah. to start from? I think okay. let's start with the abstinence bit. Could Is we that start that, with that? The beginning? It's kind of the beginning. It starts with that because they want to see because the abstinence campaign happened way before that bill. Yeah. They that's when we get to see how it was that time when AIDS was so rampant and yeah. it was such a big issue and then your Museveni was being uploaded by yeah. Yeah. by the West for how much control he had had of the situation yeah. and his campaign was condoms the whole time yeah. condoms, use condoms, use condoms yeah. but then people wanted him to change the narrative to abstinence because yeah. it's what the Bible says yes. yeah you say <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, okay, okay, uh, okay uh, on that the whole abstinence <clears throat> issue I was actually blown away by that because I think I've told you this, so I told Joel, uh, like, the whole thing that we've seen since we were kids, of the ABCs, yes. abstain, mm. be faithful, and then if, if all <laughs> fails, use a condom, that yeah. whole program, I thought it was something probably made by Uganda and us, because it was so part of our, our lives as kids, you know, mm-hmm. we had all these signposts in schools saying, you know, it had all these messages, so to actually see that this stuff was actually merely pushed on us, basically, mm-hmm from the West mm. was very eye-opening and again I also mentioned uh, Mike Pence the current vice president mm, of, yes. of uh, um, the US mm-hmm. by Donald Trump's vice president mm-hmm. was one of the key people in that yeah. so he has actually affected our lives in some way mm-hmm. but again another interesting thing that I saw about that was how the main I don't know if he's the main character the Zambian reverend uh, Kapia Kauma how yes. he said that it is something that had just been used by Uganda and the Ghana government to actually get money from the West mm. because no one actually believes that abstinence was actually working. Like mm. The rates were still high, though they made it look like things were dropping, but the rates of infection were still very high. People mm. weren't abstaining as mm. people believe. So mm. it was kind of good to also see all that opened up. It's a big lie in this one sense that <laughs> people are keeping yeah. abstaining, yet... It's just something that isn't really practical. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was also shocking to me. But do you remember the bit where it was like at some point condoms was what they were pushing before yeah. and then they just told them to change the narrative, yeah, change for, the narrative. and get some benefits yes. out of it. it? Just I think people know that we change our rules a lot for <laughs> for money. Yeah. yeah, but again, but the, for something that could really Abstinence is the worst. You can't be a hundred percent abstinence. It's another just another good thing about right. this documentary was how they kind of made it look like pretty much Africa or you, in Uganda in particular in this documentary is pretty much like the dumping site for mm-hmm. ideologies from the West. Yes. And how basically the conservatives in America, George Bush was a Republican, the conservatives <laughs> on his side are basically the ones who said if we're going to give these people aid <laughs> to treat their aid, to yeah. treat the HIV and everything, mm-hmm. then they have to adopt our values of abstinence and that being faithful, which is a very Christian thing. Yeah, it's basically a Christian way of life and they're trying to say if you don't live this way then you probably won't get the grants. So and yet they are not going to 
put such rules on their people because yeah, because it's not possible. It's, it's not possible. It's not practical. Would, exactly. Yeah, I know. That's that's another just thing. Just stupid rules they would place. Actually, the weird thing was that it was kind of like Uganda was in this whole documentary. It's like well, basically a weird social experiment <laughs> for the West. They're just experimenting ideas can this actually hold up in a society and work and <laughs> yeah, that was was very eye opening again. I think this we you you mentioned him. Uh, Please remind me his name. Mike Pence. No, oh. the Reverend who uh, is yeah, So yes, in the you. documentary, there's a a, a a Reverend called Kapiaka Uma who is in Boston currently. He moved to Boston because he was banned from Uganda since he was trying was trying to support the people who are homosexuals and stuff. So he's a major p- part of the of the documentary, and we see him as he really tries to. To say how he he's one of the people who un, has a major understanding on how influential the West is on yeah. countries like Uganda, and his understanding of it is brilliant. Really actually, because he said he did research on it, yes. and actually felt like the film was basically someone shooting his dissertation. Or his, <laughs> Me too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like because it starts with him. His because you know dissertations are basically <laughs> it's the influence of western conservative evangelicals <laughs> on Uganda and so basically it was the whole documentary and it was basically they're just reproducing this man's research with a little bit of you know real life here and there but it was pretty much his I feel it was his research that we were seeing basically Me brought to too. life it, 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 it was yeah. great I wonder how much the director himself learned from him and yeah. found him to be such a great resource and this goes into a part which I think we should talk about next about the evangelicals because that's the moment we start seeing people coming from a church called International House, House of, of Prayer, Prayer yeah. Can- based, in Kansas based, City. based in Kansas City they send evangelicals which is basically missionaries yeah. to come to Uganda and spread the good word yeah. make people warriors it's yeah. so it was very nostalgic <laughs> for me because I went to a Christian high school oh. and the way they would pray yeah. the whole like the doing tongues like there would yeah. be a room of people in tongues yeah, that scripture very... union and all that kind of stuff going oh on. <laughs> my god that stuff was like oh god this was my life at some point like that was what my school was yeah. but they show very innocent, young, hopeful yeah. Christians getting well on. Meaning. Very, very well-meaning people yeah. who just seem like they, you know, like if you you're you're growing up and you're singing Baba Black Sheep, just repeating Baba Black Sheep over yeah. again, just verbatim, word for word, what they've been taught. It's well-meaning, I guess. They believe in it. It's how I felt about them when they were constantly showing them in Uganda. Yeah. But we see these missionaries, and it was an interesting take for me in regards to the Reverend because this is also a guy who's a man of God, yeah. and mm-hmm. seeing him critique another side of it was quite interesting. Yeah. So uh, I really want to talk about that because this religion is the basis for all these ideologies. Yeah. It's the basis for do not have sex before marriage abstain yes. like people quote the bible they would always have this phrase of it's the human flesh fight your yeah, human fight flesh your... <laughs> and then it, it, he's trying to give us a bigger picture on how like these people come innocently just trying to spread an ideology and people listen to them but this is what leads to that bigger picture of the of feeling much more encouragement mm-hmm. to push for something like that even though indirectly because I think in the beginning of this of the of the of the documentary I almost thought they were going to show us like Sir Samuel Becker you know those yeah. missionaries <laughs> who we, we hear yeah, about old, in yeah. the beginning I thought they were going to give us a full background like check yeah. on even how religion landed here because I actually have something we, on that so we're going to <laughs> please give me that because we did not have religion yeah, at, at all. all and religion then happened and I think it became really big when we were colonized. Yeah. Uh, about that time is when it spread like a rapid fire. Yeah. Correct me on that if yeah. I'm wrong. Yeah. But then it just, I like how it just shows how people are well-meaning, but then these ideologies are that cause them to have this bigger picture. And I want to point out something. I really hope I don't sound stupid or factually yeah. inaccurate. Yeah. But I want to think of something like ISIS. Yeah. Because these people come with, it's, it's like, it's, people pound it on religion. Eh? It's something that is very well meaning. Yeah. Like religion yeah. is no more. Yeah. Like they're just trying to make you be good. Yeah. But someone radicalizes, radicalizes it into something everything. so yeah. 
bad and yeah. so terrible but they'll keep underlying i'm doing this for allah like someone is kill the gays for god yeah. what <laughs> yeah, you know like what sense. are you even talking <laughs> about but then i just liked how so this film really shows how these ideology is also picked up from the west please yeah. give me the yeah. missionary background of yeah. the bar, no, no. Bar. okay uh, f- first about the missionaries uh, mm-hmm. as we say that uh, the people who come like i also felt are very well meaning individuals yes. i didn't think they came with any malice to come and say indoctrinate people or anything <laughs> i think the problem begins from their leaders because the person i think the person <gasps> oh leader of God, uh, international house of <laughs> prayer yeah. lou engel I think those are the people who are in there. They are also putting their own views on their own people in their <laughs> churches, and they send them out into the world yeah. to promote. Because Luengo was a very big part of the whole uh, trying to avoid legalizing same-sex marriage oh in America. God. So him actually being the person who is saying he's sending his soldiers to Uganda to redeem oh. and everything. I don't blame the people who he sends because they are also just. They are actually yes. doing it for a good cause. They are probably living their more comfortable lives. They are living the comfort of their American life and everything. To come to, to, Africa, come to Africa, yeah, and yeah. just to spread the word of God. But mm. I feel also them they are they are they indoctrinated from Kansas City, <laughs> and they basically just transplant all that, even if they mean well, but mm. they just transplant everything onto Africans and. I'm sure they don't even realize what they are doing or the repercussions or what the kind of, the, the situation is like socially in Africa uh-huh. where there are things like mob justice yeah. that can happen and people can be lynched for <laughs> that kind of people are being exposed in newspapers that these people are homosexuals or that kind of thing. Mm. So when you come and you put that fire under people, mm. things obviously have to go bad. Things go yeah, bad. so again, about the whole missionary thing, I was, I was going to point out how I think Uganda itself uh, as a country we have been very receptive religion because mm. I think all other countries like usually I think the Bible there's that saying the Bible came before the gun like when colonization happened people came with religion and yes. they sort of subdued <clears throat> the whole populace and then the colonizers came in oh afterwards my God. so I feel um, such things Uganda for example like unlike Kenya where it was very harsh for foreigners Uganda were very receptive when the explorers mm. came the Huntington speaks mm. the missionaries received them with open arms they weren't harassed and that's why religion took flight in Uganda and even as early as the I don't know if was it the 1800s late mm-hmm. 80s when the Uganda matters were burnt mm-hmm. back then people were that devout to religion imagine wow. something that new to a country and people willing to die for it so it has been something we are very receptive to first, first forward to independence when we get independence in 1962 mm-hmm. our parties were based on religion you get mm-hmm. so I think religion has always been a very strong thing like it has been something that can bind people together in Uganda and force them to do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I feel that whole progression from the missionaries to our independence in religion was a big part of everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, they pointed out in the documentary after how Amin, after how Amin was deposed, there was a vacuum. There was, mayhem there was happened. a vacuum, yes. Yeah. And all that this... Was so good. Yeah, and the thing is that to fill this vacuum, people, even as early as, as early on as the 80s, knew they could use religion. Mm. for their own means because for example in uh, the 80s okay late 80s probably that's when things like the Lord's Resistance Army oh. like when is it Holy Spirit Movement yes so these are all these are rebel groups but they again have religious mm-hmm. religious things in their names yes uh, Chibwetere <laughs> began in the 80s you get another thing I found very interesting uh, Watoto started in the 80s 1984 <laughs> You're so, serious? I'm dead Watoto serious. is like the biggest thing the big, now. Yes, and it started in 1984. That's when it was founded. Why did its popularity peak so late? I don't think it peaked late. I think it for it to reach now, it has it has been years. It has been years of growing. Yes, <laughs> because it didn't just blow up like you mm. know, say an Imbonye, um, an Imbonye type <laughs> church. It has been it's an institution. Tim, Which, I'd forgotten yeah. about Pastor Mbonye. Ah, you see, again, that's another thing. You see how people actually uh, say that the recent Mbonye scandal, you mm. could see how people were not happy because people kissed Please pastor's Please set shoes. that up properly. Yeah. There's a pastor here. Okay, a pastor. I don't want to... Because people actually really believe in him. I, I'm, I'm on the outside looking in. I have in, a so friend who really tried to reason with me on why yeah. she believes in him. Yeah. And I think... Uh, pastor Mbonye is a pastor. Who, he's, a, he's also like... Is he's, he yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's basically a, an evangelical. An evangelical. Yeah. He was mostly a prophet. Yeah, and he, he has prophet. gained a huge following. There was a recent scandal of him because 
people saw pictures of one of his major events that was going for high pay tickets like three million a hundred thousand although he was letting in people yeah. also for free but people who are coming in for free were sitting at the back yeah, he was seated at the front with a big throne yeah. and then people were coming and kissing, kissing his, his feet, feet. Yeah, sure. so this is where my thing with religion you know i don't condemn i i'm not religious yeah. but i like to at least i i kind of have an understanding of I people explain to me how religious they are yeah. and they even tell me how I would never get it because I'm not religious yeah. which was her argument she's like these are spiritual things yeah. you won't you understand spiritual it, things yeah. do you know what I try to compare it to I'm mm. like maybe this help we don't get movies <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah pretty much you yeah. know you're like maybe I will sit here and tell you of how of my experience with the film you watch it and feel nothing and look at me like I'm crazy yeah. but again as I was saying it's just, just sorry, Ugandans sorry, sorry, are very sorry, sorry, sorry. no Ugandans are just very susceptible I think mm-hmm. to religious movements and religion really brings us together that's one thing and so when people come to Uganda say even if they're missionaries and they are bringing views that probably will connect, unite people against something it's definitely going to take off as we saw with in the documentary with the homosexuality bill that came as a result of the growing intolerance in Uganda. Mm. Yeah, and uh, the people. As I, as I was saying again, the leaders of the party have a main problem with, I don't mind the missionaries, but the leaders, the Scott Livelys, who come and organize... Scott? Yeah, Scott Lively, who is, is actually... Vox is, actually, is actually pretty much a big politician in the US right now. I think he ran for Congress like in the last election, I think. But people who come and spread these views where he's saying that the the, the, the people who killed the Jews in Nazi Germany were actually gays. <laughs> and even in a documentary, the, the reverend said that he wouldn't say this anywhere else but in Uganda, where people are less informed, less access to uh, knowledge outside their, bo- their borders, basically. So these things really come and sit, uh, they, once they plant the seed here, things really take off as, as long as it's related to religion. Yeah, that Scott Lively guy, like that, the theory that, the gay theory, actually, like homosexuality is such a sensitive thing. Like, I'm mm. sure you try to have discussions yeah, with people, definitely. and it's so sensitive, you kind of want to just leave it in its yeah. delicate spot. You just don't want to push someone because yeah. all of you are going to have different views yeah. and strong ones, yeah. and you don't want to <laughs> don't impose want to. them on exactly. someone. But hearing people's theories i have a guy at work who believes that someone a higher power is paying people to be gay exactly. with Recruit, some sort of, of agenda that's scott Lively's Scott-Lively. recruitment exactly. was so mo- much more radical where it's like your ch- children exactly. imagine telling someone you that someone your kids where, where they care the most that is <laughs> really reaching into their guts to make them feel whatever ounce of the something and just blow it up yeah. to utter hatred for something. Yes. People are forming groups to get your babies, collect them and turn them mm, gay. Yeah, abuse them sexually. Oh my god, these people and will say anything. And that the, the source of all that is Scott Lively because even there's that scene where they him. show him yeah. where he actually got the chance to go and speak in parliament. Oh my god. Imagine in a, a full parliament and he's there radicalizing people can actually make laws. <laughs> What do you expect? <laughs> and the weird thing is, like, as right now, there's you see what's happening in parliament, people aren't agreeing on the whole age limit thing. But you could see in that documentary when the bat came to the front to present his his bill, both sides were stood up to second him. That's people how people <laughs> were clapping. Actually, that scene was the most fascinating yeah. for me. I think around the time it. it happened, yeah. yes, I'm like, where was I when this happened? I remember all the scandal around the anti homosexuality yeah. bill. And I remember, yeah, I kept thinking there's no way it can go through. It went through, but then we'll yeah, talk about we'll the talk aftermath. About it, but then that scene was so daunting because of what we, how badly we've seen them yeah. disagree with each other yeah. of late. Yes, because this is something where it's really that it's 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 where they can't meet. Yes, but this is somewhere where they could gather together yeah, as Christians, Christians a Christian and nation. hate on something. Yeah. Whether it's Christian or even clapping. Muslim. Everywhere. Oh, Religious. the Muslim countries, because yes. like Nigeria is yes, mostly exactly. Muslim, right? Yeah. And they also really have yes. an anti-gay law. So basically, it's, people, anyone who was anyone religious, who was religious, was jubilating, and they were supporting. Oh what they were. my God, yeah. that killed me. Because I'm like, I wish we could clap our hands to this for a non-life president yeah, for crying was, out It's really ridiculous. Because going to that again, I want to again point out again the role of Martin Semper in this documentary, and we have, I'm sure, I'm sure people have seen what? that whole eat the poo poo. 
I'm sure you've seen that video, right? I no, watched it I a had long time not. ago and I laughed. I had and I not also. seen it before. <laughs> so it was the most hilarious thing yeah. I've ever seen. And I feel like I'm happy I've seen it now. Yeah. Because right now <laughs> I'm even more enlightened than yeah. I was at that yeah. point. But Martin Sempa, for anyone who has never seen was in church preaching against homosexuality and this was a whole thing of people always people tell you these are adults let adults do what they want to do mm. it's like they're telling us that we should not know what they're doing in the bedroom mm. but i found out what they're doing in the bedroom <laughs> the man pulls out pictures of gay yes, porn presentation, a whole powerpoint presentation the fuck he went and searched for gay porn, gay porn and showed it in his church and he showed and it he got, in church and the good thing is he got probably the worst stuff you'd imagine <laughs> the worst. It, 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 you know he could have maybe gotten a dressed man touching another guy's dick or yes. something it was the most obscene shit you yes. could really picture this guy two girls one cup bad <laughs> kind of stuff <laughs> okay two girls one cup was weird that was it pretty was much unwatchable the same. no this was bad but <laughs> yeah. no to me it was the same because I, really? I, I, I could see the looks on people and, and imagine people who aren't exposed <laughs> to these things seeing them for the first okay, time i get that imagine I how in Enraged, you'd I be there that. like your kid is being recruited into <laughs> this. I'm sure people will take up arms and slaughter people in the streets <laughs> to support that cause. I like that yeah. perspective yeah, because really I think you'd, you'd be the shock value. It would over shock yeah. you. And no, that was just yeah. And, that, that was really and I, I really liked what uh, Kapiaka Oma said. How Martin Semper he doesn't seem as a Ugandan. Mm-hmm. He's basically just a white man in a black man's skin. He has basically been trained from out what to believe, and he's now basically one of the missionaries again, <laughs> just coming and trying to impose things on people in in Uganda <clears> here. <throat> but uh, Martin Semper, I I saw that whole eat the poopoo thing, and I've honestly never taking him seriously like i think he's, <laughs> he's a little too much <laughs> he's a little too much i don't think you can really argue with him on basing on I- ideas and what he believes is mm. final yeah and he's going to make everyone hate what he hates so. speaking of how much it's about just like a, a guide coming with that ideology i like how they would say that this that the white missionaries it's actually easier for people to listen to them just exactly. because they are white yes. and you just look at white as wiser and white yeah, is it's, truth it's and i get that reality. like that is reality yeah. not even just in church, not church like yeah, walking much. to a business place with a white dude things, will pro- happen things are going to happen faster. for you <laughs> faster because people just trust them more mm. because they're from they the think there's more money involved exactly. probably there's they're going to benefit what? in some way speaking of money yeah. did you notice how Pastor Kayanja was constantly talking about money yeah. and like by the way like why like like those those churches have entered their pockets I'm like this guy is, <laughs> is, 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 yeah. he's so money yeah, minded yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't even it hide it yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was quite amazing by the way and they even really showed the opulence of his life There's that scene when he is in his home yeah. and he has an actual chef and like food lined up in a buffet and he's going into the fridge can you get me this and I don't know if he actually did, if if he was if he was aware that he was being recorded, but then it was just I don't opulent as like actually showing him living like a king. And he, that is what he is majorly criticized for yes. as a pastor. He lives too luxuriously. Yes, yeah. But I was amused at how the man was constantly talking about these these churches. They came and they yeah. entered their and pockets. Really, we really are so grateful. America. The Americans they got into their pockets. <laughs> they gave us money, guys. <laughs> what are you even talking about? <laughs> it was it was very. It was, and I, I like both even shot his interview with all those seats in the background because I think his weekly attendance is like ten thousand people. Oh, yeah. Imagine like that's. It's pulling a serious crowd every week so just showing the kind of power and he began his church in 91 i also did in 91 in 1991 1991 wow. that's when he began his ministry and apparently his church the the, the rubaga miracle center mm-hmm. was built for 7.5 million us dollars whoa half of which which was apparently donated by a south korean lady who he healed so i don't know how true that is it was on his wikipedia that's what i read and God so, damn. But since 91 years, for him to be at this level where he has this kind <clears throat> of power, it takes mm-hmm. years. He planted something in the 90s and it has grown to a point where he has a following. So, 
it's really something like and even you also emphasized how the evangelicals also him he was trained by it wasn't mm-hmm. like he is some street hustler like who was <laughs> he had donors from out other mm-hmm. conservatives evangelicals funding his programs and helping him grow his church so again but if you go to the church again in some way there's a connection to the uh, mm-hmm. the US Christian right and, mm-hmm. and their agenda <laughs> we swear they don't have an agenda yet they, so these other guys have an agenda yeah yes, it's a bit they both accuse themselves yes, of, of having agendas. an agenda exactly it's very they both it's weird by the way because to be honest uh, the whole issue of recruiting as we have said before I've met gay people but I've never no one has ever told me I want to recruit you <laughs> like that was this kind of thing you come you just one time you get paid this much the fa- no one yeah. it's in our it's in everyone's heads even yeah. to be honest even my own mother she has mentioned this to me like she also believes that homosexuals recruit in Uganda yeah so it's kind of everywhere like it's something like I've had before but I didn't really understand why the whole rec- cuz it was very puzzling as like do they actually come and like have like an office somewhere where <laughs> they have an account uh, yeah. and everything they can keep pushing money but they don't and Seeing that then seeing how this actually began with the whole recruiting thing Scott Lively of course was very <clears throat> it answered a lot of questions that had been bothering me about the question I know like people really believe this shit mm. so hard I don't know it, it, people it takes... are so hung up on it and you, now let's try to look at it from their point of yeah. view though because we both know yeah. people who are semi yeah anti homosexuality mm. and it will take yeah so yeah. never three life three lifetimes for them to ever yeah, for get ever. comfortable yeah. with it like it's it will take too much there's, there's a huge mental gap to bridge honestly it's huge bridge, it's yeah. not about to close yeah. because people are so against it and it comes up for a medium we in tv like because a lot of the the west is very is really warming up to it they have laws and everything so it's showing in tv yeah. and you notice how badly it bothers people like why there are always gay people in these things yeah. these people are trying to brainwash us yeah, so yeah. they even see it in that other way the way yeah. would think would see as the evangelicals because, yeah, brainwashing, brainwashing people yeah, they also to think, do they yeah. also think you know what the west is just trying to us to normalize, normalize it. it it's something that's not about to and it's weird because again another reason they usually like I understand it from say the African perspective mm. because in in America I would say it's just culture was as mm. said in a documentary like it's the right mm. trying to assert its its power in Africa where probably these things aren't legal like probably they've given up fighting homosexuality in their country like that's done we've already lost that battle that's what what kind of countries uh like uganda for example where, oh you're you know, meaning like us Uganda? Yeah, exactly then, like, for like, them. Like, like like to the people from the west mm. it's possible probably the ones who come here and they're trying to say no 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 homosexuality allowed all those even promoting it it's basically culture wars but again from an african perspective the prison most people give is that it's against our culture you get and again I don't like yeah, that point. Uh, let me continue. Yeah. And the thing is again because of that again I don't think it's right f- for us to say that because our culture has never been static. Yeah. It, it may be getting eroded away but it also evolves because at some point they used to kill twins. They used to <laughs> people used to kill albinos. It was culture. It was like African a lot of African cultures did that. <laughs> Twins were a curse. That is Albinos exactly were. why I hate so culture. When again, when again you come and say, it's our culture, we don't... Like, you have to... I think culture also has to evolve with the realities of the world. Like, you uh-huh. get wiser. You know, twins are not a curse. <laughs> why should we keep throwing them into the forest? Let's keep them. Albinos are normal. They can live normal lives. They can go and... They shouldn't become, like, commodities for witchcraft or something like that. So it's pretty much the same thing. And people realize that, that this argument of culture doesn't work because... Culture has has to evolve. The situation back then probably there were gay people in the 1800s. You but know, I've had were, someone have that theory. Yeah. I need to look into it further. Yeah. There's, which, there's, which there's, goes by there's the a theory about a popular king mm-hmm. of some. I won't mention the kingdom, but a king <laughs> of some tribe here in Uganda mm-hmm. who was also alleged to be homosexual. And this was long ago. Before long the Bible. Yeah. Happened. No. No. Before the Bible had come, but. Mm-hmm. 
I think that's a time when probably part some recorded history because pretty much before the missionary you don't have that much recorded we history don't have, of no. Uganda. Probably it's a few oral stuff here, but we don't really have history. But as far back as then, there have been rumors of people being gay. So I don't think maybe people are coming out now and it's being more, people are seeing it more in the streets because the world is changing. Mm. But I don't think the thing of culture, which is a very common argument, I have you know, almost every time I have this debate culture. I don't think it's a very valid argument because it's culture not valid. Involves, it's not valid. Yeah. I hate the culture argument. Yeah. But then I think the argument I get a lot from colleagues is it's not natural. Yeah, like is, no one like and that's the thing which also the people believe like people learn these things so they can unlearn them. I don't I think like natural way is man woman natural attraction is man woman i think again that's all down to the bible and yeah the whole exactly. adam and eve story yes like, we see it all from that perspective of adam god created eve. a man and a woman and yeah. said go procreate go procreate so when it's sodom and gomorrah exactly. their favorite yes, reference is sodom and gomorrah exactly oh my god he destroyed sodom and, and gomorrah, gomorrah specifically because <laughs> of homosexuality yeah, exactly. never tell me anything yes. oh god they love that argument so that's that's a very like we can't really divorce it from religion until we divorce this whole argument from religion and actually look at it objectively uh-huh. with a very human with a, with a human heart basically a loving heart like not like we're going to go by the book the, by the law in the bible or in the constitution like you as a human being like would do you think it's right to go and lynch someone for having a different sexual orientation I really that makes me think of like I don't like the Ah, Christian, I, I, Christianity is great. It yeah. it has it sets up great standard for morality. But when people push it, I hate it when it pushes them to the level of girls don't wear jeans. Yes. Girls cover your legs and your arms right. and your face and your no, like and that's when I really don't like it that like the I hope guys want christianity and religion to have like the ultimate power even above the government yeah. there's when the 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 the, the, the preacher you talked about yeah, john yeah. E. Lou Lu, Lu Engel, Lu Engel yeah. is basically like the authorities should be there but they should even be yeah. having a higher authority yeah. who is it's christians good, yeah. and they should be these christian yeah. bodies guiding them and actually yeah. being the ones that bring upon these laws for example the, that mm-hmm. law yeah. Like that is the worst idea, yeah. and I hate it when it has influences and it reeks all over the pornography bill stuff. Yeah. It yeah, reeks it all over it. You it's can just that, see that whole thing again coming back and that again. That angle of the youth. The inspiration is from there. Yeah. I really think that someone cannot have a Bible standard and really know what's right and what's wrong and be the greatest leader and not lead people into sodomy yeah. and death. You know, I don't. I hated that thing so much i hated how they have this whole vision to take over the whole world yeah, and basically oh that's always the, that's i even don't of, like I it when politicians whole, consult name. pastors and shit just yeah. don't like i think that's why i actually like the u.s a bit is because they totally divorce religion from the state they should do that yeah, like, all the time you can't you, you're not supposed to impose and that's mm. something that's i think more prominent in mm. western societies but as for Africa, Uganda in particular, mm. religion is a big part of <laughs> everything. Every decision, as far as constitution goes, mm. as far as just family relations, like mm. even you, you can be disowned for mm. changing religion. For yeah. it happens in families here, mm. or for marrying someone from a different religion. <laughs> like there are those weird small things that you see happening in Uganda that really rely heavily on religion. Uh, another thing I think we should talk about, though. Uh, is the uh, the, uh, the 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 end part of the thing the LGBT part uh, like the David Cattles? Oh, yeah, because we have to really point that out. Yeah, yeah, and the Senyonjo, Christopher Senyonjo, him as a person basically. One of in the people story, in the, yeah, documentary in the documentary who who comment on the whole situation is a uh, Bishop Christopher Senyonjo. Yeah. He was a bishop in the Church of Uganda. Yeah. And he recoll- he recollects this scenario where a couple of men came up to him and told him how they were being discriminated against and they were feeling rejected and basically they were feeling hopeless and rejected by church too yeah. and because they were gay yeah. and deciding to t- 
take them in and like yes. help them and be there for them and the church court wind of it and the court wind of his support for them mm-hmm. because it's very short because mm-hmm. i think he basically said was that uh what he told them was like be comfortable with who you are that's the thing he told them like mm-hmm. you know, because they like i think they came to him probably want to change you want to be cancelled yeah. and he was like be comfortable be comfortable with, with who, yeah. you who you are and when the church of uganda heard about that he was excommunicated completely. completely and this is a personal reason to the point of bishop right now he's in his 80s he's still mm-hmm. alive he had risen to bishop mm-hmm. and he was completely and i feel him being in his position to take that decision is probably one of the bravest Ugandans i think i know i <laughs> looked all at that, that on the man line, and, that and that i man is... could not Im- i i looked and i wondered if i would even have the heart honestly like yeah, you, li- as liberal as you are <laughs> You like don't think that, you'd go. I'm 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 hoping I really wonder if I would. You know you never know what you do until yeah. that situation, situation truly hits you. But his div- his bravery yeah. I, I it's it's unbelievable. It's, unbelievable. it's a bishop in the highest of and rankings. A, and this is a person who is really old and you'd think you'd have very old ideals but for an 80-year-old Ugandan it. man he gave to up be everything. supporting LGBT, giving up his role as bishop. It is painfully easy yeah. to condemn it. Yeah. He could have just told them to turn around, around and leave. leave. Exactly. It took nothing for him mm-hmm. to let it go, yeah. but he decided to encourage them and to just yeah. be and he he real states his his views of how the Bible there's no way for him he looks at it as these people are welcome in my yeah. church. He said that fame that the thing he thinks about is what's the most loving thing you can do in that. That's like the, what would you do yeah. as a person that's the most positive thing to yeah. do in that instance because you're a pastor. Yeah. Do things in a positive in light. Way, yeah. Do things in a loving way. Oh, and it was it was really amazing because again leading on to the, again they tried to touch on other people who are pretty much uh, L- LGBT activists and they go to the left David Kato. David Kato. Yeah, who uh, I was reading about him and apparently he's the first openly gay Ugandan man. Wow. Apparently. Are and you he, serious? Yeah, yeah, I thought I read about him and they were actually saying that he had his actually in the LGBT activism circles. He was well respected throughout the world because he had taught in South Africa for a bit. He had moved around the Are world. So when he actually was, when he was killed, mm. I think in his place in Mukono, he was killed afternoon like he was actually lynched mm, yeah. but, uh, but the story is that he was lynched by his male lover but uh, apparently the human rights watch people amnesty international even the archbishop of canterbury were all outraged at the man's killing and when I actually saw him there it was really weird because they even show scenes of his funeral i yeah the scenes of his funeral were ones i remember i yeah. remember when he died yeah like, i remembered all the ruckus around yeah. the time when he died that was I the even, one I, it section it wasn't even on my mm-hmm. radar it wasn't even on my radar that was all. weirdly in my radar i don't know how come i was in touch with the news much yeah. more at that time yeah. but i remember all the ruckus around it i remember it being on tv so much i remember that funeral scene of yeah. people shouting at the at the pastors to stop condemning yeah. homosexuality and people were so annoyed yeah. and i was so fascinated by what, what was happening especially by the people who were shouting and saying yeah. like leave him as we love him yeah. and he's yeah. great yeah. and then looking at pa- at the bishop actually the, the locals the locals refused to bury him imagine yeah. the people in his home village didn't want to touch his, they, co- they his they coffin had it had to be his friends who would carry even they refused to have service this Bishop Senyonjo yes, was one who actually who, said the who last did who did do say the last words of prayer before he was put into the ground. So it was very eye opening because I maybe again as I said I heard about the the whole build thing, but I didn't know how deep this thing really went. Yeah, based on the evangelicals and say these other LGBT activists, I didn't even know they were actually there in Uganda. I thought it was a very closed off thing, but see the actual activist was again very illuminating. Uh, I I watched a small video with the filmmaker and he actually talked about yeah David Kato David Kato and he talked about how one of his major inspirations was hearing was meeting yes. him pre death yes before he died yes and gave him more energy tell. to do I, that I, I could tell because this documentary feels like it has I would say uh pretty much three main parts okay mm. three main lines of like the narrative mm. there's Kaoma's line mm. with his research basically mm. showing how the Scott life is calm the Martin Sempers mm. then there's the everyday missionary life line <laughs> that we saw 
then at the end there's this whole Ugandan LGBT yes. struggle yes. where they show the Senior Angels, the David Cartos. Yeah, and it was I, I was impressed because if he, as you've said he got was inspired by Kato. Mm-hmm, he was. Yeah, to come on the ground in Uganda. Mm-hmm. Then for him to also get Kaoma. Mm-hmm. who has done research into this and can actually link it to something greater it's not something isolated it's not anything isolated. then to actually go to Kansas start from the International House <laughs> of Prayer follow <laughs> them all the way to Uganda so good. I feel that is such great documentary storytelling but you haven't really spoken about like the film itself and like the artistic merits did you like the way it was shot because actually like there are those scenes of where they would shoot people like speaking in tongues <laughs> those scenes were really people crying like I don't know how they got that close it was really amazing stuff then there's this session I think a prayer session in Kayanja's church mm-hmm. where like people it's like an open space and people are like walking around praying speaking in tongues these were very arresting images mm. even there's that there's I that, liked the yeah. scenes of the villages like yeah, within the, villages. the deep yeah. villages and showing someone cooking even the, very, the very first That's shot really did it the very first shot is like kids sitting in front of like this local church <laughs> at home. and I, I felt I, I liked that very much the way it even began it nice. yeah was my favorite scenes actually in terms of just i don't know if it was it, it wasn't really framing whether images that were coming across but just the way the scene came across mm. was when they would show the evangelicals going to like a super super poor woman's yes, house exactly and sitting in front of her and telling her that was the last scene of the film where they were in karamoja or something and they went to like this woman who has probably not even read a book in her life I don't like, know, have you heard about Jesus? <laughs> those what are, really, are you those are really doing? Mind blowing images. Very, actually. very good yeah. images. I'm like, like, wow. It was, and even is that scene where something again, as I said, very mundane to us. Mm. That scene where they were like at Luca. I don't know if it was Luca. One of those places where they sell chicken <laughs> on the stick. Those yes, number type that, places. That, that, and they so showed those good. people trying to like preach to these people who are selling to them stuff. Mm-hmm. And even that's like one of them. Like, do you speak in tongues? <laughs> yeah, like, I might speak Luganda, Swahili. <laughs> <laughs> like, that stuff really killed me. Yeah. <laughs> like, but again, as I said, it takes. I think a documentary, like, you have to actually have a very strong perspective on something. Like, you have to see it clearly and all angles of it otherwise you make a very hollow documentary we've there are so many yeah. hollow yeah. hollow hollow yeah like again as i told you last year uh, what's it called uh oj made in america yes just that, the whole that documentary just, just the whole other amazing. the whole other subplot of having oh on top of oj stuff which everyone knows at least probably most people in our who are exposed to this stuff then having this other whole history of like uh, violence against the blacks and everything and how in the end all that culminated after all this oppression people actually didn't trust the police that they're mm-hmm. willing to let OJ off the hook Yeah. so that's the kind of thing like that kind of conceptualizing of things that really gives a documentary some very real depth and I think that's something that really especially in Uganda we have a lot of social stuff going on we should really look to documentaries and see how they pulled it off and probably apply that to our own stories yeah, and the way we want to tell them. Really go deep into the matter, go to the past, and explore we all angles. So of it. badly, we really need to go to the past. Exactly, because again, our history, we really don't. We don't know much of it, and documentaries are one of the greatest ways to learn something. Yeah. Because they give you a great perspective exactly. on the entire event. I hope people would be, but I want. It, it, it can't be false. Like, yeah, it can't, can't be false. It can't, can't be forced. Imagine. It can't be forced, yeah randomly waking up and saying okay now i have to do an amin documentary exactly like amin doesn't resonate with you where is this you know yes. like and then it, it would be like that rolex documentary exactly just a shell of maybe it would i'd be lucky and find like a guy who who knows yeah. and he would talk like if but it, it would yeah. be very uninspired and you can see it. no but the rolex it thing would now be really interesting out. if they actually got the very first guy who made the rolex <laughs> Like you did your research, you searched, and this one man, this find brilliant, find out the history of find Rolex. Out the history, who how thought it, of the combination, combination man? Yeah, who, who was that first guy? And but maybe it was popular in just, some part. He actually thought we were interested he in just what they guy, eat. Yes. Uh, what was a that? Chikomando. 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 One of is his a, main pointers. Point, yeah. anyway, we should say we should actually give best of no, We Chico. watched a documentary about Rolex makers, and it was bad. But yeah. Yeah, but anyway, 
again, uh, to add on to that, as we, I think we're wrapping up now, there's another documentary, sister documentary, Call Me Kuchu. I have heard of it. Seen Kuchu. Yeah, and actually features this other po- more prominently. This one, uh-huh. I think, was this God Loves Uganda uh-huh. was more from the evangelical side. This one is from one Now this one is more the Ugandan, but it was done by, I think, some people from Germany. It even pre- pre- premiered in the Berlin Film Festival. Okay. I think pretty much the same year. So in case you've watched this and want something else that could be like a companion piece, look Mikuchu. for Kuchu. Mikuchu. Okay. Uh, yeah. It also features David Kato, Senyonjo, they're all basically in it again. So. Okay. Um, yeah, that does a review of God Loves Uganda. Okay, now we're going into a new section that we're going to be doing every week where we try to recommend something that we've watched and liked and we think you should watch too because it's nice mm. uh, because there's so much TV out there there's so many movies out there there's just so much art out there and it can't all be captured once every yeah, one once time a week, week. Yeah, exactly. so we think we should broaden what we we should have people maybe not getting to watch through this section to be recommendations I think I'll have a jingle to play yeah. I'm not sure <laughs> but uh, Timothy, I think start with your recommendation for the week. Uh, sorry to bust your bubble, but yeah, my <laughs> recommendation is going to be uh, the Defiant Ones. The Defiant Ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Defiant Ones, uh, because we're doing a documentary episode, I figured I would do- recommend another really good documentary I'd seen recently. Mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it. People I know, Paul, there's a bit of hype about it, even Paul, who I knew didn't watch movies, mm-hmm. Paul, who liked probably hip hop and music in general, were really interested in seeing this. So. If you check it out, it's by HBO. Yep. It basically charts the rise uh, of Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and how they came from basically being... Uh, Dr. Dre was a rapper, DJ at first rapper. Jimmy Iovine was a sound audio engineer. Mm-hmm. And how they became these great big people in the music industry with their beats and Apple music and all that stuff. So it's really... It's, it's, very, it's a very interesting documentary with interviews from a lot of musicians I'm sure you like old rock people contemporary artists so check it out so so it's also very it's very entertaining it's done in a very playful way it's not so serious and it's also very illuminating because you kind of see the how this post hustle has paid off over the years and all the risks they took and uh, all these ventures that they probably tried and didn't work out mm. yeah and all that and you should check it out I second him because I have given that that talk to people yeah. and there is no one so far who hasn't liked it. <laughs> you, no you one. They, their foot. minds have been blown <laughs> yeah. by it. That dog is great. It's four parts. You said yeah, that. Yeah, it's eh? four. No, I didn't say that. I think it's four parts. Four parts. I, it's many parts. <laughs> okay. It's a, it's a, it's a part. It's, it has parts. So it could make for great binge watching if you have the time. Yeah. Okay, my my recommendation is an LGBTQ movie. Yes. It's called Weekend. It's from 2011. I watched it recently. It blew my mind. Yeah. It's by a guy called Andrew Hay. It, he did 45 Years. Did you watch 45, 45 Years? 45 Years, yeah. Yes, I was With so the, the shocked. The old couple. It was, yes. yeah. How great was that movie? It was, it was, it was a really good... T- it had... Uh, mm. It reminded me of because of her. Has that kind of old people in crisis? Like mm-hmm. Usually, we see a lot of drama going on in young couples now. To actually, sitting poor, have been in together for forty-five years. Yes, it, it was, was a bit. It was interesting. It was very good. Yeah. He was. He's a really good guy. So the film is about a a guy who meets another guy on the weekend. It's about a gay couple. Yeah. So it just shows the encounter over a weekend, and on the at the end of the weekend, he's going to leave the country. Yeah. But it is really nice. My best thing about it is I like things that have very subdued and over realistic emotions and mm-hmm. they're represented in a very realistic way mm-hmm. and the way the guy works with the camera it just feels so real and of course you find that it was mostly real because it was very improvised mm-hmm. and remember how we're saying these movies don't come from nowhere this mm-hmm. guy is actually a gay guy yeah. and it's kind of recollecting yeah. of how his situations have been and the thing about this film is the people in it the main guy is a guy who's very uh, what's that type of person? You're very introverted and you're yeah. the type of person who would never kiss in public. Alone. Uh, okay, now, in, alone. Uh, you said yeah, an introvert. Basically. An introvert. An introvert. You would never well. kiss in public. You're weirded out in crowds. You 
you would not want you would never tell a stranger your sexual encounter yeah. and the other guy is the complete opposite yeah. now you can picture that scenario even in a heterosexual couple but now imagine this in as a gay guy who even being gay alone is already a bad thing there's people wanting to throw stuff at you through the window that even makes him a lot less open yeah. so it's just so interesting to see him uh grapple with life with this guy who is his exact opposite it is really really good yeah it has been on my watch list for a uh, long time amazing yeah, i'm going to watch it it is really good yeah. <laughs> i don't know how i know there are, there are a whole lot of I lgbt films say. that you would have recommended there but that they are, they know but that is really is good. good i'm going to watch it it is really yeah. good i cannot say <laughs> that enough better than blue is the warmest color what <laughs> better <I'm> serious <laughs> amazing so much better okay. it is way better yeah but i've seen it on a lot of this it's like a really no that 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 was one of the best things it's, 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 it's set film. in london yeah, yeah. It, it was shockingly good I actually yeah. thought i was in for some random ish yeah but i enjoyed yeah. it so you've been listening to Cinema Red Pill. Thank you. Watch also God Loves Uganda, of course, in yeah. case you haven't. And call me Kuchu. Check it. Look me, call me Kuchu. Kuchu. Yeah, call me Kuchu. That's call the title of like the sister companion piece to God Loves Uganda. All right. This has been our show. Thank you, Timothy. You're welcome. Great recommendation. You're the bomb. Joel, what up? He's not here. He's, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's actually here. He's just. <laughs> he's just <laughs> <laughs> he'll be here next week yeah. for sure. But yeah, Cinema Red Pill. Find us on SoundCloud, on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Follow so that you get updates all the time. Thank you for listening. Bye. And it's Sarah. <laughs>